Yeah, as you said, uh, I'm going to present our paper, Sound Bubbles, the Aesthetic Additive Design Approach to Actively Enhance Acoustic Office Environments. Very short. And my name is Martin Ingvar and uh, I wrote this article together with Ricardo Altianza Badel and Lena Pareto. And we are from University West and University College of Arts, Crafts and Design in Sweden, or Konstfack. Yeah, um, I will start like this. Well, imagine trying to do some concentrated work in a sound environment like this, like, for example, writing an article. Uh, we, we were studying uh, open plan offices and especially activity based offices. And uh, an activity-based office is a kind of open plan office with the difference that you don't have a fixed seating. Instead, you are, uh, sit, you are, you are, you are supposed to sit depending on what kind of activity you are supposed to do. And in all open plan offices, sound disturbance is a major issue. And other people's talk is the worst problem. Especially when people are talking on cellular phones, because then you just hear one of the one of the people talking, so get a little bit more interested in, and so on. And we we had this approach uh, about this that we were trying to go beyond noise reduction instead of uh, insulating or uh, isolating or uh, doing some noise cancellation. We were actually uh, trying to add sounds because. Um, Instead of, uh, and it's, it's not enough to just make a space silent. Uh, in, 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 we try to, so we try to add sounds to create this kind of personal sound environment. And uh, by that we were, we, we were having an, an active and positive instead of a passive and defensive approach, which means that we, we say that instead of uh, defending you from sounds. There is interesting sounds in the office. I mean, people talking could be interesting information for you. So we're trying to create this uh, uh, personal environment where you have this, um, you are able to choose what you want to listen to. If you want to listen to the sound in this uh, sound bubble we want to talk about, or hear information from other people. So, we tried to create this real-time sound generation system uh, where the background sound controls the sound design inside the bubble. So we created the sound bubble. You can see it there, and you can see Elena using it. Uh, and we want it to be site-specific and location-adaptive sound environment. And the idea was to, to make it semi-transparent so that you could choose you could hear other people talking, but you could choose to focus on the sound in the sound bubble. So, to speak, so you can support focus attention. And by that, we, we created sounds that we, we wanted them to be ambient and non-intrusive. And that led to some interesting design challenges, because we wanted the user to be able to be within or reach through but not focus on the bubble, not focus on the sound. So this led to the idea of a cognitive semi-transparent curtain and to design the unnoticeable. So we, we posed these three research questions. How do users perceive the acoustic environment with the sound bubble compared to without it? And second, how do users perceive and describe the sound bubble and their experience with the different sounds in the bubble? And third, which sound environments are preferred and used? And you can see the picture of the prototype again. Uh, in the prototype, there should be a computer here, but we were not really allowed to take pictures, so this picture doesn't exist really. Um, we had five sounds, and this is the interface that the users could see. Uh, they could choose between these five uh, buttons to choose the sounds, and they could change volume, and they can press stop. So, and we created the five sounds. Two were for creativity, uh, two were for concentration, 
and one placebo that was actually an office sound recording. And the interface was pretty simple, as you can see. So uh, we, we, we conducted a field test where we had 43 test subjects who were, who were office workers. Uh, and the system logged all user interaction. Uh, they had to answer a questionnaire of uh, a questionnaire after the test, and we observed the sessions, which means that we uh, we were looking at what kind of sounding events were happening in the office, and then we were looking at how did the user react when the sound uh, around them happened. And two people were doing uh, using the bubble for a whole day, and after that we were doing interviews with them to see how they reacted. So um, the first research question then, well, 74.4 responded that the sound environment became better with the sound bubble. 16.3 responded, but well, it was the same, and 9.3 responded, well, it became worse. And here are some uh, person's uh, the descriptions of how they used to describe the sound bubble. Well, the task I called for total disturbance free environment. The sound I picked worked in two ways for me. One, devoid from other sound, distraction from other people in the area. And two, the sound created the kind of hypothetical, serene environment that was like a peaceful environment. And, <coughs> sorry, a sonic wallpaper that gave a faint pleasant sound, silence in the wave noise, the sound felt both calm and gave focus. Or, the sound I listened to was most relaxing. One might say that it brought me back when, I, when my thoughts drifted away. It was just kind of present all the time. Some were disturbing because I thought that they maybe had a too fast tempo if there was too much happening. And of course, there were people saying that, well, the sound was too monotonous. After a while, it was also annoying. But 50% thought that most of all, most or all sounds were pleasant. One person said that I felt like I was sitting in my favorite environment for working. For example, sound four was exactly the kind of sound that I would like to hear while working. It made me less stressed. 26% said that most or all sounds were disturbing. Sound five was pleasant. The others I didn't like at all. They disturbed me. And 24 said, well, some were pleasant and some were disturbing. The musical sounds were better for work than the nature sounds. And well, I think you have to listen to the sound. So, uh, but I have to explain first that the sounds in the sound bubble, they were dynamic. I mean, this is, I'm gonna play a static sound file here. In the sound bubble, the, the tempo and the rhythm and the amplitude and the panning changed. So you had this dynamic uh, sound environment. So what you're hearing here is more like, well, a static file. And if you want to say something to your neighbor right now, it's very good because it's created this real, real simulation, so, so say something. And I will talk when I play the sounds, and I will play them pretty loud, pretty soft, so to like metaphorically give you the idea what the sound bubble kind of felt like. Yeah, and this is the first sound, and this is actually a uh, pink noise, and that's uh, most commonly used uh, in, in offices today when they are trying to mask sounds or doing some energetic masking, and this is interesting because, well, nobody seemed to like this. And now we, we took, well, we took the same sounds, and we, we used a lot of reverbs and a lot of resonators to make it more interesting, and, well, that sound became the most popular sound. And yes, of course, I should have told you that this, these five sounds, the first two sounds were designed for concentration, and the second, third and fourth were designed for creativity. And I mean, it's hard to hear that in this static move up in there when the sounds are not moving around, but uh, imagine it.
Did you hear that? So uh, one of the persons said that the sound I chose was pleasant and I could ignore the details. It did not change too much. The sound was very constant. It was in the background all the time. It was easier not to focus on it. The wind sound, the, the first sound then, was a bit too significant. I was thinking too much about the sound and too little on the job. And his favorite sound was actually sound two. And then we, we uh, to evaluate how they preferred their preferred sound curve, characteristics uh, we, we to evaluate that how the users perceive their design sound environments we applied Axison's principal component model of soundscape perception which has four criteria pairs um, exciting monotonous eventful uneventful pleasant unpleasant and peaceful and chaotic and um, and the, the users had to choose how they thought that the, their, their preferred sound were, uh, uh, if it were exciting or not, or monotonous or not. So uh, you can see here that's a bit interesting that their, per their preferred sound when working were supposed to be pleasant and peaceful and but a little bit less marked tendency towards monotonous and uneventful. But so for the conclusions then, we could see that the majority of the participants responded that the sound bubble improved the auditory conditions and facilitated focus and concentration. And the characteristics of the preferred sound were mainly pleasant and peaceful, a tendency towards monotony, a medium degree of eventfulness. And the least popular sound was the pink noise, the sound most used for uh, uh, energetic masking and so on. And an active Active acoustic approach has potential for generating play-specific sound environments that meet individual auditor needs in offices.